how long something stands or how well something functions physically is only a question of geometry. So does the geometry of a building make a difference? Absolutely. We know this for plants and animals, the atmosphere in which they live is very important. The same goes for the human being. Sadhguru, uh, I learned from my mentor architect that architectural interventions should not be just about minimizing ecological disturbance, but it must be instead about enhancing the very life that resides in a structure. Uh, so as an architecture student, I would like to know if design has the ability to heal and improve the quality of the life of the people occupying a structure. See, uh, if you look at the physical world, whether it's your body or a blade of grass or the planet or whatever, the physical universe is all about geometry, isn't it? Just to give you an example, this is about a three years ago maybe, and uh, I'm walking through the yoga center, which is people generally think it's very well, its architecture is unique and different. So I'm walking through for various details looking at it. Then I see in a place where lots of people come every day, there is a tree branch which was in a certain… this thing. So I looked at this and I said, please cut this tree branch. I did not explain to them, I just said cut it and I went on. Then the next day I was leaving the country and I was not there for about a month and a half. Then after uh, two or three weeks, they wrote a very apologetic note to me, saying that, Sadhguru, you asked us to cut the tree branch, but we thought, why would Sadhguru want to cut a tree branch? When always I'm talking about, you are not going to cut anything which is not absolutely necessary. Uh, we didn't cut it, but the rain and winds came and it fell down. Fortunately, there were no people. If there were people, things would have happened, you know. We're very sorry, we don't know why you asked us to cut. See, how long something stands or how well something functions physically is only a question of geometry. I'm saying even your body, how you sit, will determine how long the different parts of your body will last, how you stand, how you walk. Today, uh, for runners and others, do you know this posture correction has become a huge science? They got machines, they got all scanning machines which will tell you if you stand like this, how your vertebra are, how your ribs are, how you… if you do like this, where is your stomach, where is your liver, all this because if you run the wrong way, you will damage yourself. This is coming to sports in a big way now, but yoga is always about this. The whole system of yoga is about aligning your geometry with a larger cosmic geometry so that you can function with least amount of friction. If we say, there are mechanical engineers, aren't there? If you say a machine is well engineered, essentially you are saying, its geometry is well aligned. A misaligned geometry means lots of friction, isn't it? So this goes for your body, this, for ev this goes for every shape and form, everything that is functional in the universe has to be geometrically in sync, otherwise it will cause disturbance. So does the geometry of a building make a difference? Absolutely. Especially if you're a little sensitive, it will make a huge difference. For everybody it makes a difference, most people don't understand nor don't notice anything about themselves. They only understand the consequence. They only understand I'm not feeling good. They don't know why they're not feeling good. People don't notice that. But the very shapes and forms that you have around you has a certain impact because you are also a physical form. And how this physical form is, how this is, how that is, all this has a certain geometric impact. If you… I'm sure many of you have felt this, especially the girls probably would feel it more. If they walk into a building, oh, I don't like this, just like that. You know, it's always when men and women, husband and wife go to buy a house, the husband sees all the brochures and says, this is good, this is good and it's priced well, it's fantastic. She walks in and says, I don't like it. <laughs> 
Why? I don't like it, that's all <laughs> Because she doesn't feel good, that's all she knows. She doesn't know why she doesn't feel good. She doesn't know wha what is the shape which is causing this, but she knows this doesn't feel good. <laughs> so, the shapes and forms have a significant impact on you if we paid enough attention. Sid, you must look at this. You're from South. Well, you come from Kerala. You must look at the South Indian temples, how geometrically perfect they are. You take your laser measuring instruments today and check it, it's perfect, you know. How important that the right angles are right, in this building it's not right <laughs> And how the shapes and forms make a difference is something that they examined to the minutest possible thing when they built the ancient temples, particularly in the south. The North Indian temples are all brick temples, they're done in a certain way, it looks like they've all been put up in a hurry, <laughs> you know. No, why I'm saying this is, uh, I think uh, the Northern Belt took a lot of invasions and ancient temples were destroyed, they all put it up in a hurry. When they could, they just put it up. But in South, they took time and engineered it in a certain way, you can feel it, you don't have to believe anything, you just go and sit there you feel a certain… that space has a certain impact on you. Our home should be built like this, our offices should be built like this, because it's very important that… see, we know this for plants and animals and everything, the atmosphere in which they live is very important, the habitat, otherwise they won't thrive, isn't it? The same goes for the human being. If you just want to somehow live and die, you can live anywhere. But if you want to thrive, really, then it's important how, what kind of spaces you live in. There is a whole science to this, which is generally called as Agama. People think it's temple building uh, science. It's not about temple building. It was to be built, every human habitation was to be built that way. Whole lot of people couldn't afford it for their house, they did it only for the temple because it takes more uh, involvement and uh, care for this. So this is the reason, this is one of the reasons why. So you must understand only in the south this instruction is still there, in the north it's gone. In south even today this instruction is there, if you go to the temple, you don't have to pray, you don't have to appeal to some god, you just have to sit there for some time. Oh, huh? have they told you? You must sit there. But what people are doing today is they're just touching their bottom to the floor and going away. That's not the idea. The space has been built with such care, you must sit there and experience this and allow your system to make use of it because this is a geometry too. The entire system of yoga is just this, the Hatha yoga is all about correcting your geometry constantly that if you walk through the world, you will walk through it effortlessly. If your geometry is not right, then you will see every point you will get tangled up. So, architecture in India is right now, except a few, the new architecture that's been done, unfortunately we have a serious, uh, you know, mental enslavement. Whatever is done in the Western countries, we're doing it not considering our weather, our… the temperatures and everything simply. Even uh, our clothing is like that, largely. If you go out of IIT, probably most of you will be wearing a, a suit, a jacket and… and a noose around your neck in forty degrees temperature. Yeah. How to wear a jacket? I was uh, meeting some important CEOs and I told them, see in your board meetings, it's compulsory in lot of companies, they must be jacketed and tied up. I said a CEO means people expect he will do the most sensible things. No, we must… we must understand, a large company means people have handed over their own money, their savings, their hard-earned savings to somebody and expect this guy to do the most sensible thing. But this guy wears thick jacket and a tie in forty degrees temperature, I don't expect this guy to do sensible things <laughs> So, 
architecture is not just about the buildings, the very ways we sit and stand, the furniture, even our clothing is architecture in a way, all right? We may call it by different names, we may call it design, fashion, but it's essentially about shapes and forms. It's very, very important. It's time we bring it because last fifty years or so, since 1950, since this IIT, we've been in a survival mode, desperately trying to somehow make our people survive in this country. Now we have come to a reasonable levels of well-being, though it's not touch every human being, at least large segments have come to reasonable things. This is the time that we need to look at more sophisticated way of existence. And it's not always expensive, it is not. We can create something very wonderful. You must come and see, we've created buildings. See that right now I'm telling you the simplest thing. Right now this is a flat roof, I don't know what… what is this roof outside? A-frame, is it? It's a A-frame. So right now, between the roof and the gravity, there is a fight. Going on or no? You may not see the fight, but it's happening. There is tension here. And one day, someday, who do you think will win? The structure or the gravity? gravity will win. So we created structures which are standing up not because of the strength of the material but simply because of the perfection of geometry. So it's the gravity which is holding it up, not gravity pulling it down. You must come and see these buildings, they're unique and fantastic. The one thing I'm very proud of that we created, the building is designed to last for at least a minimum of three to five thousand years because there is no material, they are deteriorating. There is no steel, there is no cement, there is no concrete. It's just burnt brick. See, even if you go to Mahanjadaro or Harappa or whatever the most ancient civilization, what is it that you find? Burnt clay is the only thing that survived. It's burnt brick and just lime which is holding the thing up. It's not the strength of the material, it's the perfection of geometry. Unless a very… it's seismologically sensitive area, so we put it on sand beds, so it takes small shocks. Suppose a very major earthquake which opened up the land happened, only then it'll come down, otherwise it'll not come down.